YouTube, my name is Mesa Sean, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. All right, folks, let's just jump right into it. We're going to go through all three classes and what I plan to go into the Vault of Glass with in terms of exotics, armor, mods, weapons, so forth. And then also some leaks from JP Deathblade from todayindestiny.com. I will link him in the description. Make sure to go check out his website and also his Twitter. But we have the normal mode, the challenge mode. We have the modifiers, and we also have the name of the five challenges and also we have some of the different mods that will be dropping from the vault of glass and what they do so we'll go through that first and then we're gonna go through my loadouts your job is to let me know in the comment section which class are you going in on and what are your favorite weapons that you think will be very very useful in the vault of glass as usual leave a like on the video and also a comment for the lovely YouTube algorithm and without further ado let's do it first off according to JP Deathblade okay normal mode well contest mode we're gonna be locked at 1300 so even though my Titan here is 1325 with the seasonal artifact and I've not even touched my warlock or hunter for really pinnacles yet this week um, I'm looking good once contest mode is off but looks like normal mode is gonna be 1300 with six modifiers Challenge mode is going to be 1300 with seven modifiers. And he says there's a third vault of glass activity that has no modifiers attached to it. He says contest mode, the activity is at a fixed difficulty. Test your might. Now there's five challenges, okay? First one is uh, Ensemble's Refrain. Then we have Wait for It. Then we have Strangers in Time. Then we have the only oracle for you, I'm imagining everyone has to get one oracle, probably in an order, or just everyone has to kill at least one oracle, or um, out of its way, okay? So, uh, and also he put challenge mode, all encounter challenges enabled and required. So, looks like I'm reading into this, there's gonna be plenty to do in the Vault of Glass. All right, now in terms of mod uh, uh, mods, I'm sorry. So he says there are 11 mods that have uh, active perks only while in the Vault of Glass and more than likely obtained from hidden chests, as he says here. So we have Anti-Oracle. Defeating an Oracle will grant you super energy. Anti-Praetorian, so the Praetos are coming back. Defeating a Praetorian will grant you super energy. Uh, rapid Oracle Disruptor, your equipped pulse rifles, sidearms, shotguns, SMGs, and swords deal additional damage to Oracles. Vex Breaker, breaking a Vex with a melee attack, has a chance to spawn an orb of power. Multiple copies of this mod increase the super energy granted when those orbs are picked up. Superstructure Striker. When you're standing on a sink plate or near a conflux, weapon attacks that hit powerful Vex combatants have a ch um, high chance to stun those combatants. Then we have Aggressive Oracle Disruptor. Your equipped auto rifle, fusion rifles, grenade launchers, trace rifles, and rocket launchers deal additional damage to oracles. Then we have Vex Destroyer. Defeating a Vex with a grenade attack has a chance to spawn an orb of power. Multiple copies of this mod increase. Ooh. Voice crack. Increase the super energy granted um, when those orbs are picked up. Then we have superstructure medic. When you are standing on a sink plate or near a conflux, weapon attacks that hit powerful Vex combatants have a high chance to create a burst of healing for you and allies near you. Precise Oracle Disruptor. Your equipped bows, hand cannons, linear fusions, and scout rifles and sniper rifles deal additional damage to oracles in the Vault of Glass. Vex Striker. Defeating a Vex with a precision hit has a chance to spawn an orb of power. Multiple copies of this mod increase the super energy granted when those orbs are picked up. And then lastly, Superstructure Defender. When you are standing on a sink plate or are near a conflux, weapon, atta weapon attacks that hit uh, powerful Vex combatants have a high chance to weaken those combatants. So that's it for the mods. Now let's dive into uh, my loadouts. So for my Titan, I'm going to be going Helm of Sane 14 and running Sentinel Titan. I want my Ward of Dawn, not only for protection, but as people pass through it, well, they can get themselves an overshield. I'm using the uh, Charge with Light system, so become Charge with Light by simply picking up orbs. I'll, I'll mess with this later on, but I'll put whatever ammo finder I need and probably throw some discipline because I can't fit anything else. Or maybe I'll put an intellect uh, mod on there. 
Uh, I'm going with uh, Supercharged here. So uh, you can have uh, two additional stacks of Charge with Light up to a maximum of five. Uh, I'll put whatever Anti-Barrier or Overload or whatever champs we run into in the Vault of Glass. I'll put that on. Uh, on my chest piece, I've got Protective Light. So while Charge with Light, I gain a significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed. And it's going to take up all my stacks. My usual reserves for whatever I need, uh, a Discipline Mod. On my boots, I'm running High Energy Fire. So while charged with light, gain bonus to weapon damage. Each defeated combatant, though, uh, is going to consume a stack of charge with light. And then also on my uh, on my boots, uh, I mean class item, I'm running Wrath of Rasputin just in case I want to make some more mind cells. Uh, if I choose to run an Ikelos weapon, or if I use my Cold Dulo or an exotic that creates solar splash damage, I can uh, create some more mind cells. As usual, bomber. So when I pop my um, class ability, I get some grenade energy and distribution, reduce all ability cooldowns when I use my class ability. Before we move on to the Warlock and the Hunter, let's talk weapons, okay? So, man, we're going to be all over the place here. And normally, uh, for anything with anti-barrier, I always was using Nightwatch, okay? Well, I finally got, I got three hung juries, and this is the best one I got so far. It's got a Wellspring, and it's got Surplus. So, kills with this weapon will give me ability energy. Pretty happy with that. Surplus, I was shocked. I always kind of slept on this one here. But, man, when your abilities are fully charged, man, this thing reloads really fast. It's very stable, and you've got snapshot handling on it. So, I masterworked it, and I've got lots of range in it. Put major spec on it, but, you know, who knows what I'll put on there. So, I'm thinking either for a kinetic, it's going to be that, or maybe Bright Tech. I love Bright Tech. You can grab this from collections. Look at the range in this thing. Masterworked. Uh, it's got Zen Moment. When you lock on a target, you will feel that kicked in. Uh, Multi-Kill Clip also it comes with. So, if you have it or have gotten it from Festival of the Lost, you can go grab it. I've got a couple of... I, well, I finally got a Rampage Chroma Rush, but these things are kind of weak in the department of damage wise so i don't know i might put major spec on it or maybe minor spec uh depending on what kind of ads we run into in the vault of glass uh i need to infuse something into izanagi's just in case this thing becomes one of the dps weapons right now we don't know what we're going to be using in terms of dps so i'm going to have an izanagi's powered up uh i love my trustee but I have a feeling we're going to be running into a lot of Void. Because I remember Vault of Glass. Well, we ran into a lot of Void. So I definitely want to have my Grid Skipper. And also my Reckless Oracle from Garden of Salvation uh, powered up in terms of power levels. All right, But yeah, Grid Skipper, uh, I couldn't get a better roll than this. Uh, I've got Frenzy on it, Slide Shot, High Cal Rounds. But it's Void and I love that thing. It, it's really good. Um, I'm going to put my Ikelos on if I want to create some more mind cells. I need to get some grenade energy back. Um, I am going to have a sniper on, and I figured I'd go with the Dord. I'll go with Vorpal if we need it for a sniper. But this is mainly because when you're doing the Oracles and you're in the Templar section, you're going to be having to deal with Hobgoblins, okay? And they're going to be quite annoying. So in Destiny 1, I always had my Longbow, and I would just pick them off with my Longbow. Um, I have Graviton Lance there just for a goof if I want to use the Seasonal Artifact uh, Warmind's Decree to create Warmind cells from splash damage, but I don't know about that one. Now, Divinity, we've been all discussing this. I don't know if we're going to need a Divinity or it might be non-beneficial to have a Divinity because remember, you're going to be down a person with DPS for the Templar and Atheon because you're going to have a Relic user. That right there, they're going to be holding the Relic, and they're going to be supercharged with the Relic, so they can hit them with the supercharge from the Relic. If you're not familiar with what I mean, watch my Refresher Guide, which will be annotated on screen and also in the end cards. But, yeah, we want everyone on DPS. Uh, probably not Divinity, because then you have one person that's using the Relic, and then one person Divinity, and then that just leaves four people doing DPS. We need five people doing DPS. And I'm keeping the Salvo on me with Vorpal and Boss Spec just in case. You never know. Now for the Heavy. Um, here's where a number of things could come into play. I think we definitely want someone on Anarchy for sure. Um, for Linear Fusions, uh, I've got the wrong one here, but I do have one with Vorpal Weapon on it. So I would put Sleeper. We used to use Sleeper here all the time, but I guess Sleeper's bugged right now. It didn't get the buff that was intended. Right now, Deathbringer is absolutely phenomenal right now. Uh, so I masterworked mine. Just go to Shiro Chi, guys, and get the masterwork done there. And if you put Warmind's Decree on, uh, you can create a lot of Warmind cells. So I might use that for the Fanatic section. 
if I need to clear ads in a section with lots of ads like the fanatic section I'm gonna use this thing here because with reconstruction I can give myself about hundred and twenty four I think a hundred and something rounds with this thing it's ridiculous and I have rampage for rockets I've got my beloved cold Dulo with impulse amplifier and frenzy I'll change boss spec uh, to major spec if it's just yellow bars but if I'm using it for DPS I don't know we'll see um, I'm gonna level up with well power up whisper of the worm just in case xenophage may come in handy eyes of tomorrow could be a contender so yeah I'm, I'm gonna say for here anarchy is definitely a must okay maybe xenophage maybe eyes of tomorrow maybe deathbringer but perhaps snipers might be for the win I don't know we'll have to see uh, you let me know in the comment section what do you think moving on to the hunter I did not transfer any of my gear over here but I'm basically gonna be running the same type of mod setup that my Titan has except I'm going to be running of course the well of radiance probably for most parts um, or if uh, one of my teammates shout out to Raven star she's gonna be running well if she's running well I might be going chaos reach actually with geomags but if I do run well I am definitely using the new boots, um, boots of the assembler for some uh, for some nice healing. But if I have to run DPS, I'm probably gonna go with Geomags, and I got two different roles. I got this one from a lost sec. No, I got this one randomly the other day. Uh, but other than that, uh, I might use M Mantle of Battle Harmony. I don't know. Uh, Phoenix Protocol. I don't think I'll be using gloves. Uh, you know, sun braces if it means throwing solar grenades at the Templar. Uh, I don't mean to push them off, I mean just to do DPS or even Atheon. That might come in handy. Um, could go Slova Bomb for Anthony. Uh, Atheon, we call him Anthony. Uh, I might use Nezarek Sin. I don't know. But right now, I'm leaning towards I'm probably going to be a healer and going in under contest mode. I think two wells are going to come in handy. For the Hunter, I will be using the same mods as the Titan, except I 100% will be using the Star Eater Scales. You gain super energy from Orbs of Power, but man, you notice a big difference when you pick up those Orbs of Power. Um, while your super energy is full, picking up an Orb of Power overcharges it, so you can get a stack of four, making your super much more powerful. So, with that being said, I am either going to use Top Tree Tether to tether a whole bunch of ads, like in the Templar Well section, or if I want to do straight up DPS, a la like Celestial Nighthawk, um, I might be going Mobius Quiver, or on the flip side, I might be going Gunslinger and using Bottom Tree Gunslinger. But the key is whether I use either Gunslinger or if I use, let's say, Bottom Tree or even Top Tree. When it comes to doing DPS, uh, I need to have that four stack of Feast of Light, okay? So same mods, but those are the key exotics. And yeah, I'm not talking about any other exotics on the Hunter. That's what I'm using. Who knows? Stasis may come in handy in this raid to freeze things. We might use it, but I'm in Matt. I'm envisioning for this raid, two Titans, two Warlocks, and two Hunters probably would be ideal. So. Alright guys, that's it for the video. Let me know in the comment section what you will be running for the Vault of Gladys this weekend if you are indeed running it. Alright guys, leave me a hashtag made it to the end if you did make it to the end and do me a favor. Drop a like in this video only if you see fit. Follow me on Twitter at MesaSean. Check out my stream. Usually always on YouTube and that's it. I am out of here like Vladimir.